The day may come when the courage of RTS gamers fails, when we forsake BFME games and break all bonds with Middle-earth, but it is not this day. This day, we are gonna cast a replay and analyze the gameplay in Battle for Middle-earth 1 on the map Anorian. Before further ado, let's get it started. Alright guys, at the bottom left side of the map, we have the Yellow Isengard player Felix Anius. His ally at the top left side is the purple Moro player Altaria, the Moro Isengard on the left side. Their opponent at the top right side is the Green Isengard player Ganjaman and his ally at the bottom right side is the Blue Gondo player Ryan. It's a nice matchup, Gondo Isengard against Moro Isengard. Um, on the map Anorian, which is the most iconic map in Battle for Middle Earth 1, as a 2v2 map. The most played map by far, by the way. It's also a nicely balanced map, I need to admit. I like this map also quite a lot. And yeah, let's talk about this matchup first, Moda Isengard against Gonda Isengard. It's a nice matchup, it's winnable for both the sides, even though I would prefer the Gonda Isengard team a little bit more, because I feel like they can shut down the Moda entirely later on, because the way the Moda uh, faction works in this 2v2 match is like a sportive faction, right? You need to offer leadership to your ally with the Isengard player at the bottom left side. So you want to give him the sport of the drama troll from the troll cage. You want to give him the sport at some point with the witch king of Engma as a hero. And you also want to give him the leadership of the eye of Sauron, but also potentially later on the leadership of the darkness from your spellbook. And this all, what I was just counting guys, can be negated with only one power point from the spellbook of the green Isengard player Ganjaman's Freezing Rain. Freezing Rain, if you don't know, is shutting down the entire leadership just like that and also kind of making in this kind of situations, the Moro player completely useless. So the late game should be favoring definitely the Gonda Isengard team in my opinion, because the Gonda player, if this is not gonna be enough, can always also get some trebuchets on the field, and trebuchets, if you don't know, are the best counters against the combos, because combos are very slow, and they won't be able to get the chance to dodge the incoming damage. Nice one here from the Gonda player, I like it. And Felix Anius was not demolishing this tower in time, that's why those soldiers now are level 2 as you can see. And Felix also lost all the mills outside, luckily he was starting with 2 furnaces, which is smart against this matchup. Because you will not be able to keep your Lambert mills alive in this matchup. That's why you will need the money from your furnaces inside your base early on. On the other side, Felix was able to destroy one of the mills from his opponent, which is nice. We have now 3 furnaces into the Uruk pit coming up for Ganjaman, the Green Isengard player. As Ryan is reviving his Hobbit's Pippin, Peregrine Zook, as Gandalf would like to call him, he's gonna also lose his farm at the bottom right side to this Orcs from the Mortal player. I mean, on the bright side for the left side team, the Mortal player is untouched so far, you know? He didn't lose a single Lumber Mill, and that's how his base is looking like. He has almost full base now with 5 slaughterhouses inside the base. He will be able uh, to get the chance to get uh, the Troll Cage up on the field very, very soon. And Troll Cage is gonna be needed. Not only because of the drama troll spot you need later on for the Isengas player Felix Anius, but also uh, you need to get the mountain trolls on the field in order to have some protection against the Gondor Knights later on from the Gondor player Ryan. Yes, already the stable on the field, and that's a very early stable, and I don't like this build order at all, guys. Look how expensive his Gondor Knights are. Luckily, he had this farm outside there, but that's still too early. Normally, you want to build a blacksmith and two farms before the stable. This way, you can have much more money. First of all, and also, you're gonna have your Gondor Knights cheaper on the field. So I don't like this at all. I think that's a big mistake. Uh, you're gonna get your Gondor Knights eventually like 20 seconds early on the field. But for that reason, you're gonna lose a lot of money. Which is not worth it in 99.9% .9 of the time. Alright, this farm is gonna be taken down and Felix Anius will get the chance to get this, get this farm back. On the other side, uh, the Moro player is now getting his Troll Keech up on the field. The Gondor Knights are gonna be used early on for harassment, they're gonna try to, you know, kill all the mills all the time. But that's gonna be harder and harder in the later stages of the game, once the Isengard player Felix Anius is gonna get some pikemen, and the Moro player is gonna get some trolls on the field. They have the protection they need in order to keep those Gondor Knights away from the Lumber Mills. On the other side, um, the Green Isengard player, Ganjaman, has a great amount of resource income. Look his base in compared to the base of the Yellow Isengard player. He has not only a full base, but also he's building up now uh, the armory, which is quite nice. There's some crossbow man here from the Isengard player dealing with the orcs, and that's gonna be an attack, I guess, from the 
Yellow Eyes and Guts play Felix Anius. He's gonna actually use the Warchant for that, alright. In the meantime, the Gondor player Ryan is gonna uh, try to creep this troll layer. And he's gonna use two Gondor Knights for that. He's gonna use one of them to lure the troll away from the layer. And the other one to kill the layer. And this way you can secure this creep easily. And Gondor's Citadel, unlike Rohan's, is also able to shoot. So you can always, you know, lure the troll afterwards to your own base, okay? I mean, Felix Anius is not gonna achieve too much with this attack, but, you know, it's always nice to keep up the pressure. He was actually able to destroy this Lamyrmir, which is something. Uh, we have some Urukai from the Isengard's player Ganjaman inside the base. They're gonna use the well for the regeneration. And Felix Anius has to also capture this mill one more time. Again, his resources are not looking that great so far. But again, he will also have the support from his Anai, the Moro player, Altaria. Who is now building up the second troll cage. And I don't know about that. In the meantime, Ryan, the Gonzo player, is gonna do the same thing for the troll cage at the top side. So again, oh, that's a war chant. Alright, interesting. I think that's not necessary. Because this Gondor is able to be able to take it down very fast anyway. Money is secured, creep secured, and also power points secured. Look his power points, he has almost the power points he needs for guns after whites later on from the spellbook. And that's what I was trying to say early on, guys. Look how hard it is becoming now for the Gonzo player to take down those Lamry Mills from the Mora Isengard team. And it's gonna become even harder once the Isengard player is gonna get some pikemen on the field. Because now the Uruk Pit is level 2 and that is necessary before you can recruit the pikemen. He's being chased down by this uh, trolls, <laughs> but Isengard's player Ganjaman has now some combos on the field with fire arrow upgrades and they're gonna just one shot the trolls as you can see. Also this creep is gonna be secured by the Gonzo player. Now from his money and the fact that he was not purchasing any upgrades just yet, I'm assuming he's trying to save for Gandalf. And that's the reason why he's trying to get the power points he needs. Because Gandalf the Grey is kinda useless and not worth investing 6000 resources to recruit. Unlike the Gandalf the White, uh, who is quite powerful in, and is able to get on his shadow facts and kill pretty much everything. However, I feel like... Uh, Gandalf is not gonna be that useful in this matchup. I mean, he's always gonna become like a big threat and Isengard's player Felix Anius has to recruit lords in order to deal with him. But he is not gonna be that effective. Because once the once these combos have this much leadership uh, in the trolls, Gandalf will struggle big time to take them down in time. So, let me tell you something. That's a nice by the way, but he will, that's nice from the Isengard's player, but the Gondor nice, they will still be able to survive, which is quite nice. Let me tell you one thing, guys. One troll with Witch King, Drama Troll, and Darkness Leadership can actually survive the Easter Light and can even survive the Lightning Sword. That's how powerful the leadership is in Battle for Middle Earth 1 in compared to BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King. Nice attack here from the Gondor Isengard team, I like this. The Mora player has now the Drama Troll he needs and he was waiting for it. He has lots of trolls on the field now, he can actually defend this easily. The only weakness, in my opinion, from the Gonda Isengard team in compared to, for example, Rohan Isengard team comp, is the lack of leadership. Especially the damage leadership. They have only the leadership from the Warchant, which is not enough to burst down the trolls. And Tainted Land will be used now, as you can see from the Water player. Tainted Land, if you don't know, guys, is working like a like a like a freezing rain, and is able to negate all the leadership from the enemy units. This way, this you know Urukai combo battalion, they're gonna lose the leadership from the Warchant. They won't be having the chance to kill those trolls fast enough. And with that being said, um, the trolls can just run them down as they did. That's why at some point of the game I feel like Felix Anu, uh, not Felix Anu, sorry, Ganjaman, the green eyes and guys playing at the top right side, might need Lourdes and hope that he gets level 5. And also the Gondor player Ryan can also recruit the Boromir, who is similar to the Lourdes and give the same stats, so 60% damage boost from Boromir but also from Lourdes and this combined with the Warchant this can make your you know, combos hit like a truck and you might be able to actually one-shot these trolls and you have to because once they reach your combos, they're gonna one-shot your combos instead so you need to burst them down and you wanna always target multiple trolls at the same time you don't wanna attack the same troll because sometimes, as you guys know when you kill a troll, he doesn't die so he's dancing around and attacking this troll, because he's gonna be dead, right? It's kinda useless, that's why you need to micro intent uh, very nicely in order to take down these trolls without losing your entire army in seconds. Very, very important. We have now Gandalf the White on the field and Gondor player is going for the upgrades next. 
and unbelie unbelievable, but Felix Anius, the yellow ice and gas player, has a lumber meal next to the base of the Gondor player, Ryan. <laughs> that should not happen. Trust me on that one. Okay, this lumber meal is going down. We gotta keep an eye on Gandalf, but there is Lourdes, if I'm not mistaken, from Felix Anius. So Lourdes is, as you guys know, no, he's going for Lourdes now. He's the anti-hero from Battle for Middle Earth games. And he has the cripple ability, which is gonna give him the chance to pin down this Gandalf for multiple seconds, available with level 1. That means if Gandalf gets crippled down, guys, trust me, these trolls and these combos with this much leadership can one-shot them. That's why Ryan, the Gonzo player, has to play extremely careful. Alright, Warten is being used, and at this stage of the game, actually, Gunja Man stopped making combos, he's gonna make some crossbowmen instead. I mean, uh, I like them because they are much more mobile. If you combine the units, like for example the Yellow Isengard does, you're gonna have some benefits because this kind of these units are gonna be much much tankier. With the Urukai tanking as the front line of the battalion, but they're gonna be much slower uh, than uh, the crossbowmen. And you need the mobility now in this kind of situations. Nice micro here from uh, Ganjaman, as you can see, attacking with one, dodging with the others. Lightning Sword is going to be used from Gandalf at the very same time. This troll has no leadership of the Drama Troll. Drama Troll was far, far away. And he was actually able to kill multiple trolls. But the Mortar player will still be able uh, to defend himself with this troll inside the base. As the Gondor player was trying to go for harassment with the Gondor Knights. Okay. Uh, they're going to keep losing this fight all the time until uh, Ganja Man gets the power points he needs to unlock the Freezing Rain from the Spellbook. And he has four power points away from that. He's using now the industry, which is gonna give him the chance to boost the money from the selected furnaces by 100%, which is double the money, by the way. And he has to, uh, he's going now for Dolts, and he has to also make some more units 24 7. Maybe he can even ask his ally to get the third Lumber Meal in order to be able to spam more and more units, because trust me when I say that, he's gonna lose this units 24 7. Like, there is no way at this stage of the game, game that they can. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. Oh, Gandalf has to be careful. Cripple is gonna be missed. Nice dodge here from the uh, Gonzo player, Ryan. Felix Anius was not paying attention. Uh, if you don't know, Cripple can be missed. But unfortunately, the Gondor player was losing one of the Gondor Knights. Which is, I think, fine. Because killing the Uruk Pit is always nice. Remember, Uruk Pit from the Isengard faction is the most important building to keep alive. Because a level 1 Uruk Pit can't give you the chance to recruit any pikemen. And you're gonna need the pikemen later on. Trust me on that one. I think we are now in a stage of the game in which Freezing Rain is gonna become kinda more useless. Because there is a Alvin Wood, and remember, if you uh, if you are playing for example the Yellow Isengard now, and the Green Isengard gets the chance to use the Freezing Rain, all you have to do guys is step on the Alvin Wood, and leave the Alvin Wood right after. I don't know if this is supposed to happen, but this way you can get your leadership back. And again, in an all out fight right now, with this much leadership, and also this Lord is gonna hit level 5 quite fast, trust me on that one. Okay, Ganja Man is bringing his ally, they're gonna group now, and this time the Gondor Knights have full upgrades, they have also the Horseman Shields, or in this case, called the Knight Shield upgrade. Rallying Call, or War Chant, not Rallying Call, this is not Rise of the Witch King, sorry. <laughs> Alright, uh, uh, War Chant, I wanted to say Rallying Call again, I'm kinda, you know, you know it's the first commentary of the day, guys, alright? And by this time the Mortar player has a lot of units inside the base. Uh, Tainty Land is being used now, the trolls are charging, but he has only two trolls, one of them is coming from the backside, the trolls are gonna be taken down, there is the Lord, who has crippled on cooldown, Gandalf has to be extremely careful, there is just too much leadership on the table right now, I don't think he has the chance to go for a Visa Blast before dying in a single second, and that's why Ryan has to be extremely careful, because losing Gandalf is not gonna only put you behind, but also give lots of power points and experience to your opponent, the Isengard's play, Felix Anius. Look at this. There goes Gandalf. And even Spongebob is kinda scared about this situation, guys. Gandalf can't survive this much burst. There is no way. I mean, if the only way you can actually approach these units is with the Freezing Rain or the Elven Wood. Otherwise, don't even try it. Because you're gonna get one-shotted before you can reach out to them. And now he has to invest the money again into reviving Gandalf, which is quite expensive and also time-intense, because you need to now waste many, many minutes I think he was trying to save this spot for the workshop, but that's gonna be all delayed now just because he lost his Gandalf. Uh, I think the decision making in RTS games is one of the most important steps in order to win the game. It's a bad commitment once again from the Gondor player. And he has not a great amount of resources right now, right? He's not gonna be able to make everything at the same time. 
Look his money, guys. Like, he has to make Gondor Knights, he has to make trebuchets, he has to revive his Gandalf. That's all too much. And he can't even afford it. He's now gonna be built uh, potentially a second well here. Let's see. I don't know why he was demolishing that, uh, that at the first place. And he doesn't need Faramir. He needs Boromir, in my opinion. Because what you can do now with Boromir, if you get Boromir on the field, you can put them close to the crossbow man. This way, he might potentially get the level he needs. He was forced to go for a trebuchet uh, around the fortress as a defensive expansion. But the trebuchet is gonna get one-shotted by this Isengard combos, trust me. Um, yeah, if you don't know guys, Faramir and Boromir from the Gondor faction are always joining the fight with level 3. And Boromir needs only one level. Look, Faramir, that's a hero by the way. <laughs> Our level 10 combos are scary with the Drama Troll as the sport. Again, 50% damage, 50% armor and 200% combat experience. That is the Freezing Ring guys. Freezing Rain is this time from Felixanius. Alvin Wood is gonna be used to negate the leadership from the Isengard player Felixanius now. He's diving in the troll. The only troll remaining on the field was getting killed. Felixanius, look this lords. This is a hero by the way. <laughs> this, you know, combos with the Warchant. Nice fireball, but look at Saruman, please. You see that how much life he's losing to a couple of archers? But that's a nice fireball regardless, I like it. Uh, Ganjaman now has the power points he needs for the Freezing Rain, but there is a Alvin Wood and Oh, never mind, this Elvin Wood got covered. So this is the only Elvin Wood remaining on the field. That's actually not bad, because if they now get the chance to push the Isengard's Mordor team back, they won't have any land from the Gondor player around this side in order to use it to regain the leadership, alright? Alright, so beautiful, actually this game is going quite well. So you can see it's a back and forth game, it's hard to tell what's gonna happen next, as Gandalf of the White is returning to Middle-earth. His task is not done yet, as we guys know. You might also get the chance to revive Farami, but I feel like that's gonna be a waste of money. Again, if you wanna get a second hero on the field as Gondor at this stage of the game, it has to be Boromir. Because you will need the damage leadership in order to burst down the heroes like Lords. What is this guy doing? Oh, he has no cripple. Nice with that blast, though. Oh, uh, and I like that, that Ganjaman is being patient with his, uh, with his freezing rain. He knows I don't need to use it now. Now they have leadership. Freezing Rain is gonna be used now. Drama Troll's leadership is getting shut down completely. Now the Gondor player can go inside the jeans and he's gonna do it. Ripple ability is on cooldown. Lourdes is gonna get bursted down from the Easter Light. He is gonna die potentially to the combos from Ganjaman. And it's gonna be the case as Saruman the White is going inside the jeans. The Trolls without leadership, as you can see, they are lying like flies. They can't do anything. The Drama Troll with his belly knocking down this Gondor Knight in a second. Another Wizard Plus is getting cooked, but he's gonna be able to dodge the incoming damage. And just like that, with two Wizards of Middle-earth, Gandalf and Saruman side by side, what can you do against such a reckless hit? Is what Theoden would like to say in situations like this. You need to make sure to kill this level 10 combo if you can. Uh, Felix Anus is looking to save him. Thanks for the follow, by the way, guys. If you don't know, I'm also streaming on Twitch, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. The link for that is gonna be in the description down below. Would appreciate it a lot if you guys check me out on my Twitch channel as well. Nice one here from the Gandalf. Look how uh, confident he's riding on his Shadow Facts. <laughs> I like it. Saruman is also very impactful. He has the Fireball available, with that Plus available, as well as the Warm Tongue. Which is, by the way, changing the outcome of the game if you can use it nicely. And now there are two main threats. The Isengard Mora team have to focus. Gandalf? I don't know. The way he's riding is so funny. <laughs> Freezing Rain is gonna be turned off very, very soon. And again, the Green Isengard player can always use this to hint at lands from the Mordor player. They have also Witch King on the field, but right now there is no leadership. I mean, a Rain, if you don't know, guys, is only affecting the units which are on the field by the time you use Rain. Every unit coming on the field later is gonna still be able to get leadership back. Gandalf has to be careful. I don't know what Gandalf is doing, guys. He has to run for his life. Because once this level, this combo, you see that, right? The animation of the glow effect, that means this combo has the leadership, unlike the other combos. Because Freezing Rain is still active. Witch King has to be careful, Easter Light is not gonna be able to one-shot him. That's why he's gonna cancel it. Um, the way you can kill uh, the Witch King with Gandalf all alone is you need to land uh, the Easter Light, but also the Lightning Sword on him. What is Gandalf doing? He's suiciding, I guess. Just like that. I don't know, maybe he was not paying attention. Heal was available. No, it was on cooldown. Without heal, don't do that. Tarmon is dead next. And just like that, everything is falling apart. Level 10 combos left and right, also from Ganjaman. The reason why they are level 10 is obvious, because Gandalf is also giving you 200% combat experience, just like a drama troll. And also Saruman is giving you 100% combat experience, 
just like the Eye of Sauron. The Witch King got bursted down, he has to be careful. There are some level 10 combos and even without the support of the heroes, they can still hit very, very hard as Witch King has been taken down just like that. And Isengard player Ganjaman has to now revive his lords, who's level 2, and Saruman who's level 7, as well as the Gandalf from the Gondor player, who is now building up a Stoneworker. That's very interesting. It's not gonna do much for you, because trust me, this combos with this much leadership, they don't even care about your laser towers anymore. Felix Anius is now getting his own uh, Saruman on the field, guys. Was using Fireball right after. But they can't win this fight, they know that, they have to disengage now. But I like it a lot, Felix uh, Ganjaman is making two armies, trying to use the money advantage he has over the Isengard's player Felix Anius. And this way he can split the army and attack multiple sides at the same time. This is the way you wanna play this matchup, I like this a lot. Hit and run, and once the Isengard player is reacting to this play, you can now move again with these combos from the bottom side and do that over and over again. This is a power point game at this point, and the one who gets the AOD first, the one who gets the Balrog first, is gonna be the victor of this game. And you know, it, especially when you... Oh, that's a that's a Miss Wormtongue here, by the way, from the Saruman from Felix Anius, the yellow Isengard player at the bottom left side. The combos, they're gonna be able to survive. Um, especially when your rain is down as the green Isengard player Ganjaman, there is no way of taking a bad fight. Because again, you can't compete in an all-out fight with this much leadership from the Isengard modder team. Rama Troll, also uh, Lourdes is gonna eventually hit level 5 at some point, Saruman leadership now, Warchant, I, Witch King is cooking. Remember, reviving Witch King in BFMU1 is, you know, for free. Under uh, zero, <laughs> as you can see, he's now also getting another Nazgul on the field. That's something I don't recommend that much. Look at this damage. The level 10 combos or level 10 units generally in BFME 1 are hitting very hard. That's the Cloud Break by the way guys. Cloud Break is reducing the armor from the enemy units and also reducing their movement speed. And it's also able to fear the units level 1 if they have no fear resistance. Just like from for example uh, Saruman's leadership. The, you know, as you can see fear resistant to Nerby troops. Lourdes uh, from... Uh, they are making now mistakes. Lourdes has been taken down one more time here from Felix Anius, unfortunately. It's a bad fight to take. Saruman is running for his life. He's gonna be faster than those combos. Lourdes also from uh, Ganjaman is now level 3. Hopefully he will be able to save this level 10 combo. Is this gonna be enough? Is this gonna be enough? No, it's not gonna be enough as the Nazgul is arriving on the battlefield. Nazgul can die quite fast though. Nice fireball here from Saruman, so I like it. But there is no more Lourdes and there is like Gandalf the White on his main Shadow Facts. Can he go for a beautiful and juicy? He's gonna go for Easter Light instead. That's gonna kill Saruman. Heal has to be used. They have so much leadership. It's not worth at all. I mean, don't trade your Gandalf for any hero in the game. Gandalf is the best hero. That's why you don't need to tra uh, trade it. Especially one for one, it is not worth it. Maybe it's worth it if you kill like two Saruman's and one Witch King in order to lose your Gandalf. Okay, but in the meantime, also Ganjaman was keeping, keeping up the pressure, guys, from the top left side with the second army. Uh, Freezing Rain uh, is actually, or was actually used, 13 power points collected now for Ganjaman. He's only 7 power points away from his Balrog summon. On the other side, Altaria, the, the model player at the top left side, has his uh, Witch King back in the business. And the Witch King is gonna be able to kill these combos. There are not enough combos to kill Witch King in time. Um, on the other side, uh, Felix Anius, the yellow Isengard player at the bottom left side, ladies and gentlemen, is only two power points away from his own Balrog summon. And we already know what it means, right? The Balrog all alone, and we have seen this already many, many times on my channel, is able to one-shot the entire Gondor base by himself. Like, he doesn't need any more support. You summon Balrog, kill the Zeta, go for Breath, uh, Fire, kill all the five buildings in the backside, then you have more than enough time to finish off the base. Only with the Balrog, and if this is not gonna be enough, remember the Mordor player can always send the sport with his Witch King and his Nazgul, just like that. Okay, I mean, um, yeah, this game can, you know, everything can still happen, and um, in order to survive the Balrog, what the Gondor player has to do is, he has to buy the middle camp. Like, Felix Anius is a battle for Middle Earth expert, so trust me, he knows how to use Balrog gas. Yes. He knows how to defeat the Gondor player castle with Balrog all alone. So don't hope that he's gonna fail. That's why it's so important to buy the middle camp now if he wants to be able to survive. But Gondor's money is not looking that great. You know, reviving Gandalf over and over again is gonna cost you so much money. Remember, recruiting Gandalf at the first place is gonna cost you 6,000 resources, right? Then 
He was reviving my thing like two or three times, so he was investing more than 10,000 resources for the Gandalf. Which is a lot for a good faction, because, uh, yeah, the, two, the good factions, they have the, uh, they have the advantage with the walls around the, around the base. But evil factions on the other side, they have always much greater resources, like Isengard can use Devastation, Industry, you know, Field of Fires, Mora can use Scavenger, Industry, uh, Devastation. So, and Lumber Mills generally are also able to create, generate much more resources than a farm outside. So with that being said, Gondor's economy is not looking that nice. Um, you can always change that by building the building which is called Marketplace, which is gonna give you additional money from the farms and blacksmiths if you get the upgrades you need. That's a freezing rain now from Ganjaman, the Green Isengard player. Negating all the leadership effects now as you can see they are not glowing anymore. Fireball is being used, but I feel like Balrog is ready in the business, right? Balrog is ready. No, it's not ready yet. He needs still one power point. Here's the Balrog now as Gandalf goes down. He can also get the Vision of Palantir unlocked. Look, the heroes are dying in a second. Gandalf is arriving on the battlefield. Nice dodge here. Nice splitting. I like it. Gandalf can't even go for a Wizard Blast because Felix Anius is microing his units very, very nicely. Heal is on cooldown. Gandalf is going to be taken down. And we, ladies and gentlemen, have a Balrog summon. The big boy himself is joining the battlefield and flying inside the jeans. Just like that. And let's see now. The Balrog from Felix Anius in action. He was not using the you know, Ignite, unfortunately. Ignite is very necessary in order to boost your damage. I, he is Ignited, I take it back. That's a perfect breath fire. You can't deal more damage than that. Five is the maximum. You can't kill more than that, trust me. And that's the way you want to do that. Kill the buildings behind. Focus on one side. Save your second breath fire to finish off this and this Sita at the same time. That's why you need to kill the well. And you can do that by flying on it and using Ignite right after. Look how much time he has still remaining. He can still fly one more time on top of the Zitter. And the Gondor player will be defeated. He has no camp. This is under control from the Mortal player. And with the, you know, lost base, Ryan, as you can see, guys, has been defeated. I think Ryan kind of played sloppy in this one, in my opinion. I think investing so much money into Gandalf over and over again and making the same mistake of underestimating the damage output from the enemy combos with this much leadership and even the rain was kind of... Of course, negating the leadership is always nice, but the combos were level 10 and he had many, many combos, don't underestimate the damage of level 10 units in BFMU1, guys. And also, the Stoneworker, I mean, was kind of useless, not worth of the investment in my opinion. Trebuchets instead could be having such, you know, much more impact on the game in order to deal with this massive leadership from the Isengard's model team. Trebuchets, they don't care about your leadership, trust me. Uh, Ganjaman keeps fighting now at this stage of the game. He's hoping to get the Balrog himself. Uh, but, uh, you know, defeating the evil base with Balrog all alone is much, much harder than defeating uh, the base of the Gondor or Rohan base. Because the layout from the evil faction space is so much more... That's a nice Balrog. Look at the animation now and look how many units he will be able to kill. There are some units slash heroes slash abilities in the game. They don't care about how much leadership you have. And your normal units are not going to be even able to hurt them. And Balrog is one of them. Balrog, the summon damage from Balrog. Raphaia is going to be used. He was missing the Zita. And that's going to give Felix Anius the chance to rebuild everything. And that means there is no chance that the Isengard player uh, Ganjaman will get the chance to defeat the space now with the Balrog all alone. And his combos are gonna die eventually to the Witch King and the Nazgul. He might use the Fire Whip against the Witch King. Without the Ignite, it's not one-shotting him. I think even with the Ignite, it's not able to one-shot him. That's a Witch King after all and not a big Nazgul. Darwin is back in the business, but I feel like after failing with Balrog here, he might call it GG and leave the game, guys. But still a very nice game. I mean, not a lame game because we have not seen many catapults slash trebuchets, so it was fighting all the time. Ganjaman was doing a nice job with the split of the army. Uh, maybe getting lords a little bit earlier on the field and trying to get him level 5 earlier would be nice. The Gondor player should be making more catapults, more Gondor knights, and trying to play a little bit more carefully, definitely, with the, with the Gandalf. Because Gandalf is nice to have him on the field, and you don't have to go for a crazy hero move, you know? Uh, because alone his presence in the game is gonna create pressure on your opponent. And he has to respect that Gandalf is on the field, and once you lose him, that's gonna give so much window to the enemy team to play around that, you know? That's why uh, losing important heroes like Saruman, Gandalf over and over again, 
It's gonna not only make you lose money, time, but also the opponent player is getting so much power points and so much from that. Warm Tongue can be used maybe. He's gonna use Warm Tongue now on the on one of the trolls at least. But a uh, nice one. I mean, not, not bad at all here from Ganjaman, but it is not enough, I guess. Uh, you know, it's a two, burn, two versus one situation, as you can see. Taruman has been taken down by Lourdes. Lourdes is shining bright like a diamond. He's angry. He's like Hulk from Middle Earth, by the way. Ganjaman knows he can't win this. He's gonna leave the game, and that's gonna be the game, guys, which is won by the Mora Isengard team. That's a nice game to cast. I hope you was able to kind of see now what you are supposed to do, what is the necessary step in order to win this game. If this was enjoyable guys, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this in the future. I see you next time, until then take care of yourselves and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace guys.